you as a school board member, uh, kind of overseeing the running of the school district, and then probably been on the fire department say, over 40 years total? 40, 40 years. Over 40 years. So he's here today for Fire Prevention Week to sh talk to you guys and show you um, a scenario, close before you doze. Um, so I'm going to stop talking because you want to listen to him rather than me. And yeah, you do. I know. That's okay. Bless you. So, Mr. Dunn, this is our third grade class. Uh, they're a pretty good group. How's everybody doing today? I am Lee Dunham. I'm an assistant chief with the Canville Fire Department. I'm also a New York State fire instructor, so I teach fire classes throughout Tiger County, and I also teach up at the Fire Academy in Montour Falls. Today, on behalf of Underwriters Laboratory and the Campville Fire Department, I'm here to talk to you about close before you doze. And what that means is we want you to get in the habit of closing your bedroom door before going to bed at night so you can save your life. And I'm going to demonstrate that. How many of you right now close your bedroom doors when you go to bed? Not bad, not bad. Hopefully, after seeing this presentation, that you may have a second opinion about and keeping it open and closing your door, okay? So what's gonna happen is, in a few minutes, I have a smoke machine. I'm gonna fill this room up with smoke. We're gonna simulate there's a, there's a fire on the first floor. You're upstairs in your bedroom. You're sleeping, you're gonna have a closed door. So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna show you these three rooms we're gonna fill up with smoke. And your bedroom is gonna stay clear. So the point of this demonstration is we want you to go to bed at night with your doors <coughs> closed. These three rooms here can get anywhere from a thousand degrees or hotter depending on what kind of furnishings that you have in your homes today. When I was growing up as a kid, and this dinosaur behind me back here, when he was growing up, <laughs> we had all wood products. We didn't have plastics and synthetics like we do today. So plastics and, syn and synthetics burn faster hotter and emit toxic gas. That stuff can kill you, okay? So that's why we want you to be very careful when we're dealing with smoke. So this is your bedroom. I'm going to put smoke in here and eventually go up. I'll, I'll take questions as soon as I'm done so you guys can kind of see this demonstration. Okay? So let me get this thing going. So the smoke's coming in. This is where the fire started. Okay? You're up here sleeping. So now if we open this door, you're going to see the smoke's going to start going in here. One thing about smoke and heat and fire, it's going to follow the path of least resistance, which is up. So all that smoke is now going to go upstairs. It's going to come up into this bedroom. Now it's coming up the stairs. It's getting into the hall room, the upstairs room. You're in here sleeping. You have your bedroom doors closed, which hopefully everybody does. Now the smoke's coming up. There's some more smoke going in there so we can see what we're talking about. See all that smoke's coming up? Now, let me ask you. Are you going to be able to see here? No. It's going to be hard for you to find your way out. Plus, you don't want to be sucking in any of that smoke. Because again, that's very poisonous, toxic smoke that can end up killing you. We as firefighters, when we go inside, we have an SCBA on. We're on air. We're breathing air, okay? So now, put some more smoke in there. You can see here, right? So if you have a closed bedroom door, you're going to have time to get out either a window here if you have a roof or we want you to be as close to that window as possible until the fire department gets in and hopefully mom or dad or even you dial 911 and tell them what you have okay so now let's say for instance you were sleeping but you had your bedroom door open watch what's going to happen this is your bedroom door open see all that smoke coming into your bedroom see that and what's going to happen is, well, last time it went off. Hopefully, you have a smoke detector in your bedroom 
and in the hallway. So, what does that what does that mean? So what do you want? What do you want to do? What do you want to do? Get out some way somehow. Again, if you can get out of your bedroom window, if you have a roof, that's great. If not, please keep your door shut. Put something on the bottom of your door so that smoke stays out. Because if this smoke gets in here, you're not going to be able to get out, okay? The other thing you want... What if you open your window? Can it go out? The problem is, if you open your window and you don't shut your bedroom door, that's oxygen. Fire wants that oxygen. So what's going to happen is that fire is going to go towards that fresh air. If you can get out of your house on the first floor, shut your door as you leave the house. So when we get there as firefighters, we will go in and open your door. If you leave that door open, that's just going to fuel that fire. Okay? That means that fire is going to grow. It's going to intensify until we can get water on the fire. The other thing that you should have is a carbon monoxide detector. Okay? You can't smell it. You can't taste it. You need to have one of these in your house, too, in case it goes off. If this goes off, you need to get out of your house as soon as possible. That doesn't mean there's a fire. It means you have some type of carbon monoxide going on inside your house. The other thing I would like you to get, if you can, talk to your parents, is just a small little fire thing that you can have in your house in case you have something small, whether it be a little kitchen fire, a waste paper basket, and if it's a big fire, don't grab it because it's not going to do anything. I want you to get out of the house. That's the most important thing is to get out of the house, okay? So before you get questions, let me just show you. So now we arrive on scene. First thing we're going to do after we put the fire out, we're going to vent. We want to get all that smoke and stuff out of the house. So we're going to open up. We may cut a hole in the roof. We're definitely going to open up some windows. And we want to get all that bad smoke and stuff out of the house. So when it clears out, then we can go in and we can go ahead and make sure that there is no more fires. So let's ask some questions. What do you got? The window's really high. If you have like a, a chair or something that you can get on to. How many of you right now have those escape ladders in your house? Anybody have one? They're great to, they're great to have. So in case you've got to get out of your second story window, you open the window, you put that ladder out, and you climb down that ladder. Those are nice to have. Some of you may have a porch roof coming off your bedroom or whatever room. If you don't have a door on your bedroom, and there's another room that you can get into that has a door that you can shut that door, that's going to save your life. That's if the door is locked, where I'm going. Which door? Who can't get in? Me? Oh, we can get in, trust me. <laughs> we, we do what's called forcible entry. We can get into pretty much anything. Yeah, you don't you don't want to go in the basement unless you know that there's ways to get out of your basement. Okay, you want to be careful about going. If you're on the second floor, I don't want you going down your stairs to try to get out. I want you to be in this bedroom with the door shut, being close to the window, and waiting for us to get there. Or if someone has a ladder, your neighbors that can throw a ladder, but you can get out because you're going to survive this for these three. I want you to get in there, stay there until we can get there, we can get you out. Yes, it can end actually because it's all that plastics, like uh, everything that's plastic, what, that's, what happens is when that melt, when that starts to burn and stuff, it just emits all this toxic uh, smoke, poison smoke. It can be very deadly. That's why if you have to, take a towel or something, if you get like in a bathroom, get water and put it on your face. But again, I don't want you coming out of your bedroom. If you open your bedroom door and you see nothing but smoke, close that bedroom door and get to that window and hope if you can open it up and yell or something, but make sure that bedroom door is shut. Oh, that, yeah, if that bedroom door is open, that oxygen that's coming in is going to draw that fire right to that room. And I teach that when, when we talk, when I teach fire behavior, we actually show that, how quick that fire can come to that oxygen. Oh, 
closed screen, you can just take that out. If you can get your window open, that screen will just push right out. If you don't have any windows, if you can get to a next room that has a window, I want you to get to that window. If you can't, hopefully mom and dad has already called the fire department. I want you to stay as close to the floor as you can and try to cover your mouth with, with something. Okay? But if you can get to a room before all that smoke gets there, that's what I want you to do that has a window. If not, just keep that bedroom door shut and put a towel or something on the bottom so that smoke's not coming up underneath the door, okay? I'd be very careful jumping out, especially on the second floor. Now, if you have a roof there, I would like you to come out of your bedroom window. If there's a porch roof here, get on that porch roof and wait for the fire department to come and rescue. Don't, but I don't want you to jump from here to the ground, okay? Shut the, shut the door. The key thing is here with a door with a closed door, you should have a smoke detector in your bedroom and one out in the hallway. Okay? So the one in the hallway is going to go off before the one in the bedroom goes off. Now let me ask you this. How often do we change the batteries? At, uh, every year, okay? But I want you to check them every month. At least have mom or dad just check to make sure they're working. But if you put a battery in this month, October, next October, I want you to, they say every six months, you know, when we change our clocks, check them to make sure. If it's still working, I do it once a year. And I check my battery, I check them, matter of fact, I just check them today. I check them once a month. I ask any more questions. How many of you have a, uh, a escape plan that you guys practice at home? Everyone should have one with your mom and dad. Okay. If you get out of the house, it should be a safe, safe zone where you go. That could be the big oak tree. It could be the, the, the shed that's in the backyard or something. That's where the whole family should get together and meet to make sure everybody's there. Before the winter comes, just practice. Try to open that window. Ask mom and dad if we can practice. Just open it before the winter comes. Of course, we want to keep shut the winter coming. Um, well, hopefully, if you shut your door, don't lock it. Because what we do is when I teach firefighters, we, we call, we say, try before you cry. I mean, try to open the door. If I can't open the door, then what we'll do is we'll somehow, some way, we're going to get into your door. We'll use a Halligan bar, and we'll you know not try to beat your door down, but just try to open the door that way. But we trust me, we can we can get into pretty much any type of door that we need to get into. Okay, a couple more questions. I know you guys got to get out of here. Okay, if it's open, you need to shut your door. If the door is shut and mom and dad can't get to you, let them know that what you saw tonight. And then when I I got something I'm going to hand out to you guys. You're going to each get a magnet and you're going to get a door hanging in front of the door. There's a website that you can go to that your parents can look at 
and you know, kind of get some ideas and so forth. But definitely, if you have your door closed at night, you're going to be safer in that room. And if mom and dad can't get to you, if they know you're in that room with a closed door, they call the fire department. They can say, my daughter, my son, whoever is in this room, whatever side, you know, whatever side of the house it's on. Okay. Can you? Is there another room that has a door you can get to? Okay. If you can get to that room, if not. You may have to open your window, and you may have to kind of hang out that window if you don't have one of those ropes, uh, ladders. But I mean one of those like, skate ladders, I call them, where you actually pick it up and it just folds and goes down on the outside of the house. If those of you that don't have a door on your bedroom, do you have a window, maybe talk to mom and dad about buying you, you know, getting you one of those escape ladders, fire escape ladders. It's very important. Right to your roof. That's great. That's where I want you to go. Probably one more question. One more question. Then what we'll do is we'll show you if you guys just want to take a look at the new apparatus, our engine. That's fine. And then we're going to hand out some stuff. Okay. Yes. 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 Please do. We'll let them know that there's a fire at your house. The big thing is, is that mom and dad. Hopefully have a phone with them. Nowadays with the, with the cell phones, when I was growing up, we didn't have no, no, no those things in it. But we had a long, long cord that hung on the wall. Um, but now that we have cell phones, hopefully and a lot of you may even have your own cell phone. Call 911 tell them you have a fire. So what we're going to do is Mrs. Horton and Mrs. Hollenbeck, if you guys would, you can take your classes over to look at the new uh, truck. Uh, Ms. Barb, Ms. Ferguson, your classes, if we can line them up, we're going to give them a door hanger and also a magnet. So, uh, go ahead, Ms. Ferguson. Real quick, did you guys learn something today? Yeah! Okay, when I give you these, a magnet, put it on your refrigerator. Let me ask you guys, when you guys go in the refrigerator and grab something to eat, you shut the door? Yeah. Why? Because Keep it cold. Keep it cold. So, when you put this on your refrigerator, this is looking you right in the face saying, Close before you doze. That means close your bedroom door. These I want you to put on your door to remind you to close your doors when you go to bed. But you need to have working smoke detectors, okay? So when you go home, tell mom and dad this is fire prevention week. We want to make sure you have working smoke detectors, okay? And carbon monoxide. Okay.